John, thanks so much for sitting down with me. Much appreciated. You're the founder of the Genetic Literacy Project. Can you share in a nutshell what GLP is doing? Sure. We are uh, an information-based, a media-based uh, nonprofit, eight years in existence, uh, focusing on biotechnology, the innovative cutting edge of science mm -hmm. in both the human sphere, medical uh, developments of various kinds, um, drugs and so forth, but also in the agricultural sphere. And we're committed to um, not just reporting on the science, but reporting on the intersection of politics, public policy, and how the media covers these issues um, as a way to understand how these issues are being framed and maybe help increase the public knowledge and um, open the doors for biotechnology innovation. Very important work. What would you consider in your daily work are your, your main challenges? Well, I think there is a lot of um, misinformation about biotechnology, a lot of fears, um, a lot of concerns. Most of it is driven, I think, by uh, unfortunately, by green groups, because ultimately the focus of biotechnology, specifically in the agricultural sphere, is sustainability. So, um, again, in theory, um, uh, green activists, environmental activists should be em very embracing of biotechnology because it's incredible potential that's already being realized in many cases. But in fact, um, these groups have become enemies of innovation in, 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 in the agricultural sphere. And I think um, overcoming the misinformation uh, that has dominated the uh, political and social debate over GMOs and now gene editing is really the biggest challenge that, that we face in trying to correct the public um, information stream. Yeah, we, um, one, one could wonder by blocking this, this innovation and progress, you know, should, should anybody be holding them accountable for, for their anti-innovation movement? This is a challenge. Uh, I, I, I cannot um, overstate how congruent the goals ultimately of the green movement and um, biotechnology mm -hmm. proponents are mm -hmm. because we face incredible challenge, climate change challenges, a growing population, a growing affluence in population, which will um, mean more food is necessary. Um, how do we change that tide? Um, it's a real challenge because people are very tribal in their beliefs and very, um, I, I think, um, uh, unwilling in some cases to challenge um, some of the uh, popular uh, views of biotechnology. In fact, um, even when things are demonstrably um, beneficial, for instance, um, uh, golden rice, which is vitamin enhanced rice, which could literally change the, the lives of, of millions, if not more than a billion people in Asia, um, been demonstrated in, in dozens and dozens of studies. The green movement has said, we see this as, uh, as, you know, a, a kind of a, uh, a, a fake way of, 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 of introducing biotechnology under the tent. And they oppose it. And they should have blood on their hands. It should be recognized that they're denying technology that could save lives. And I think once that's realized, I think that uh, with their feet to the fire, there might be some reawakening in the green movement about how important biotechnology is. That would, that would be good. How, we, how we can, can we put the, the fire to the feet, as, as, we, as we say? Uh, well, one way is with organizations like the GLP. And I think mm -hmm. that there are um, other organizations that aren't affiliated with uh, the biotech industry. We as a nonprofit mm -hmm. um, don't take any uh, money from uh, either the medical industry or the agricultural industry. We're purely a foundation-based nonprofit, which increases our legitimacy. When we started out eight years ago, the very first day, we had 26 visitors to the site. And I think 24 of those were me checking whether the site was still up. And uh, we now average 55,000 visitors a day. So there's clearly a hunger for this kind of information. Um, four or five years ago, the, in the United States, as well as in Europe, uh, there was overwhelming um, belief, I think, by, the, by, by many in the um, general public that GMOs were harmful, that there were uh, safety issues that would preclude ever embracing that biotechnology. I think that problem uh, and that challenge has been won. Uh, we now recognize that biotechnology is not only safe, but it's productive. So this is a this is a long war, not a short skirmish. Over um, years and decades, 
biotechnology will flourish and will have amazing transformation of both agriculture and medicine. In the short term, I think it's a bit of a bloody tangle. Yeah, yeah I fully agree with you there, John. Um, the GLP is, is uh, based in, in the US. You're here at, uh, at Euroseeds in, uh, in Stockholm. What would you say are the, are the geographical, you know, the, the differences in, in viewpoints? Well, we've always considered ourselves at the GLP a, a global-faced nonprofit uh, NGO. Um, so we really monitor what's going on in Europe very, very carefully. I, I think the big difference between Europe and the rest of the world, not just mm -hmm. Europe and the United States, mm -hmm. is that um, Europe, uh, because of the influence of a formal green movement in the U.S. and many other countries, the green movement is, is incorporated within other political parties, like in the United States, it would be part of the Democratic Party, that you see it operating, unfortunately, as an obstructionist force. And so it's led to very regressive uh, legislation, politicized debate. And so uh, transgenics, GMOs, have been blocked essentially since 2001. And when the opportunity came along, uh, which the rest of the world has embraced with gene editing to open up biotechnology um, to uh, other uses, Europe essentially folded it back into the old GMO protocols. And I think um, really has become the, uh, the tail rather than the head of biotechnology innovation. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, that's very sad. You you mentioned the blocking by by certain groups in society, um, keeping um, I would al almost say vulnerable uh, groups in society away from uh, innovation, from progress, from healthy food. Uh, how can we turn the tide? Well, I, one of the keys I think is Africa. Africa um, has depended um, for trade reasons and cultural uh, reasons on its relationship with Europe, probably um, versus any other part of the world. And Africa um, has become a bit of a leader in some aspects of, of biotechnology innovation, particularly in animal biotechnology, which actually, um, <laughs> that's the one area in the United States, uh, for instance, where um, our uh, legislative system, regulatory system is, is rather backward. And I think, um, that Europe um, is recognizing that it has to let Africa be Africa. And I think there's a lot of international pressure for African scientists to develop technologies that they can own. Um, they work with international uh, corporations, but they're not beholden to them. And I think that offers a, a, a way to, to, to push the envelope a little bit and um, open the door for these technologies to embrace by the developing world, which will really be the engine that will drive international acceptance of these issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that, let's hope so. That would be really good. Uh, after so many years in, in, uh, in existence with, with GLP, what would you say are your main achievements? Uh, some of them are very specific to the United States. Um, uh, there's no question that uh, biotechnology is politicized everywhere. Mm. Uh, for instance, in the Obama administration, although the president was quite progressive on lots of issues, um, he was also beholden to some degree to activist groups, environmental groups, many of which are very ideologically opposed to biotechnology, transgenics, GMOs. Mm -hmm. And um, he, uh, people within his administration actually had suppressed approval of various biotechnology innovations such as a sustainable salmon, a salmon that grows um, mm -hmm. uh, twice as fast as normal salmon, but otherwise is identical in every single other aspect of it. So it offers incredible sustainability benefits with that kind of uh, growth um, uh, um, acceleration. Uh, and we did an expose of, of that uh, that also appeared in a number of other publications. So we worked together. And within 24 hours, um, the article that we published got over 22,000 comments. And within 48 hours, the government reversed its position on it and released a, um, an FDA uh, certification, a safety certification, it had suppressed for more than a year. So we actually have actually moved the ball in those cases. But more than anything else, we publicly call out um, organizations and individuals who are ideologically opposed to biotechnology. It's one thing if you have a science-based debate that also reflects people's values, ethical and religious. That's not what's going on. The anti-biotech um, community is quite rigid. And it's willing to lie. I hate to say uh, that so bluntly, but they're willing to distort facts and scare people 
Um, in the United States, it's, it's more about food scares, mm -hmm. but in places like Africa, they're going door to door telling uh, people there that uh, transgenic foods cause sterility and blindness, yeah, things wow. that are frighteningly mm -hmm. untrue, yeah. um, but they're brazenly willing to exploit people's lack of sophistication or education in these areas. Mm -hmm. So our job, illuminate and empower people to make these decisions by themselves. Sounds good. How, how can people help? Uh, well, to me, the cause is, is, is not the GLP, although we definitely need uh, public support and frankly financial support because we don't take foundation. We don't, uh, for me, the, the cause is the larger cause of biotechnology. Of course, the GLP uh, is a nonprofit and uh, because we take no corporate money, we mm -hmm. exist only on foundation support, mm -hmm. we really are looking for um, uh, organizations that are willing to support our, our, uh, our goal, which is mm -hmm. to educate and empower people to make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, but the bigger issue is how do we fight misinformation? Mm -hmm. And that's by working on, in coalitions and informing politicians to recognize that biotechnology is, if you want to equate it with anything, biotechnology is sustainability. I think we have to um, educate people that sustainability is the um, word of our era. We are faced with climate change issues and we're faced with food security issues that are interlinked. The only way we can address them in the uh, agricultural sphere is to embrace the most um, advanced technology. And that means biotechnology is a tool in the toolbox. And I think once that hits home, the sustainability centrality to biotechnology, I think um, especially the millennial generation would be more apt to begin embracing this with the kind of fervor that we need to challenge some of these uh, seemingly intractable problems. Let's hope so. And so you're looking for financial donors? We are. Uh, it sounds like we're, uh, we're, we're, we're hawking for money, but we, we, we are precarious. We are a small NGO that really... Um, uh, that, that, that really punches well, well above our, our, uh, our, our weight. Yeah. Uh, we um, exist totally on foundation or individual grants, uh, and we're really looking for progressive-minded people that recognize in this highly politicized world that we stand above ideology and fight for technology and fight for um, really the dispossessed, the, the, the poor people of Africa and developing countries in Asia. Um, and we can't do that without public support. So. Um, if people want a, uh, a voice out there, uh, along with others, that want to uh, empower people to um, uh, take control of their technological future and, and, and food security, um, the GLP is, is a resource that I, that I hope people would consider supporting. Excellent. Good luck with that. Thank you, John. Thank you very much.